Now, in some of the most stunning research that's been going on in the last few years, it's been about black holes, in my opinion, and we often don't cover them nearly enough. Now, this is a simulation of what a black hole would look like as material orbits around it. The left-hand side's a little brighter as the material comes towards us. Um, we saw an image much like this taken of the black hole in M87. But first of all, what is a black hole? Let me go through this very quickly. Um, imagine you're standing on Earth and you have a ball. You decide to throw the ball. You throw it up, it goes up, comes back down. That seems all normal so far. Now, what if you throw it a little harder? Well, it goes higher. Seems to make sense, it comes back down. Now, what if you're really, really strong and you throw it really, really hard? So strong, you throw it and it doesn't come back. The question is how fast do you need to throw it such that it does that? That's known as the escape velocity. That little VE, it is equal to actually this equation, the square root of two times G. G is just a gravitational constant. It doesn't change, it's how strong gravity is. M is the mass of the thing you're standing on and you divide all of that by the size of the object or the radius, how far away you are from the center of it. Now, imagine, what if that escape velocity were the speed of light? What if you had to throw it so fast, you had to go the speed of light to get off the object? Well, nothing can go that fast. Um, the, the, the rules of the universe, the way it works, that's sort of a speed limit. I'm not gonna go into why that is the case, but if you now set the left-hand side equal to C and solve for the right-hand side, say R, you can figure out how small you'd have to make the earth to make it a black hole. Now, I didn't calculate that. I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer because we're running out of time here. But the Schwarzschild radius, that R, is equal to 2 times gm over c squared. It's, it's quite simple. And that tells you how big that event horizon is. Now, the event horizon in reality is about that size for that image on the left-hand side of that M87 black hole. So that's what a black hole is. It's something that has so much mass in such a small radius that you need to travel the speed of light or faster to get away from it. And since you can't go that fast, you can't get out. Not even light can get out, so they're black. Now the light we're seeing around this black hole actually is coming from the disk that's outside the black hole, the accretion disk. The material falls in, heats up, glows very brightly, um, and we're picking up that light. So we're not picking up light from inside that event horizon, but from just outside. And it does weird things. There's so much gravity there, the light wraps around several times. It's crazy. And folks did a simulation. It's that simulation we were showing at the opening that we flubbed a little bit. So we'll show you it again at the end or we'll post it online for sure. Um, but there were beautiful images from it. Here's a, a still and you can see it's two black holes. One's bigger than the other. Um, the blue one's the smaller black hole. They just color coded them. They're not different colors because of the physics. It's just they made them that color so they look good. Um, but then they said, well, what happens if they interact? In fact, if you look at this one, let me use the laser pointer here just a little there's some red light right along the very edge of this black hole. They zoomed in on it. That red light's coming from the other black hole. It has to go and make a 90 degree turn to get to us. So how crazy is that, that the light can do these things? Um, it can bend it in this crazy way. The blue one is behind the red one now. So it would go forward backwards. So let me run a little clip of that movie and you can see what these look like. So it should start here in just a second, I believe. Yeah, there they go. So here they're orbiting around each other and everything seems kind of normal to us. And now we're gonna see what would happen if you were viewing it from a different angle. So now that blue one's behind it. Now we're changing our angle again. So now we've gone off to the side, everything's kind of normal. Well, normal, why are those disks warped and weird? That's just the black holes. That's like a Frisbee around a black hole. That's all it is. Well, an air, more like an Arrowby disk really. Um, but they aren't warped like that. That's gravity doing that warping. So crazy stuff when you have black holes and we're able to simulate what it would look like to have two of them around it, what they look like from different angles, which physics has come a long way to be able to do the, these sorts of calculations. Another black hole story, this is M87 itself. This is the galaxy on our big picture. It's in the Virgo cluster. It's the, the biggest elliptical galaxy in the Virgo cluster. This is in the Gunther Depths of Space at Griffith Observatory. Um, they've observed this galaxy and this black hole in many different wavelengths. Now, of course, we see visible light with our eyes, but there are gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, the whole spectrum you can make observations in, and indeed they have. We also have an exhibit about uh, the whole electromagnetic spectrum as well. It's currently turned off, as you can see, Griffith Observatory is still closed. Um, we will let you know when we are able to have visitors again, but that's not right now, unfortunately. So this whole show's remote and we're doing the best we can. Um, the observatories that made these observations, a bunch of them in space, of course, there were some ground-based ones too involved on it, but you can see the ones there. And, and look at this, this is the list of observatories. 
and here's the, the little video they made. So those radio images, um, really some millimeter, um, to be able to see that black hole. And as you go out, you're starting to see some of the structure of the jet, the jet in the very closest regions within one light year of that black hole. The jet's caused as material falls into the black hole, heats up, and it's sent out on, on the poles in the polar directions of that accretion disk. And as you continue to observe in the radio, you're seeing more and more of the jet coming out of that black hole. So that's within about 100 light years. And now we're starting to look at the VLBI network, the very long baseline interferometer, and you're able to see these details in the radio. Now, other observatories kicking in, the Chandra X-ray Observatory, X-rays in this jet, visible light from Hubble, um, the Swift Observatory, New Star. So being able to observe across all these different wavelengths, seeing the highest energy to the lowest energy, this, the light all created by this jet, but through different mechanisms. So um, the, the, we're able to piece this all together and really build a picture of how this how this jet works from the smallest scales out to some of the largest scales. So these are uh, un, really unprecedented observations of these sorts of environments. And um, I can't wait to see these as they're taken over more and more years to see if we can start to perceive changes within this. So moving along, um, we've also found a hidden population of high redshift double quasars. Now, that M87 galactic nucleus is active. It's shooting out a jet. And those sorts of things, depending on how you view them, can look like a quasar, um, which is a quasi-stellar radio object. They used to look like stars. And now we've learned they're black holes with stuff falling down into them. So some observatories were used, the, the Gaia Space Observatory, of course, the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, uh, Gemini and the Hubble Space Telescope all took observations and they discovered a population of these objects that kind of seem to strobe a little bit and flash back and forth strangely. Um, they've learned that they have matter falling into them. Um, they're probably interacting galaxies. You're seeing those. This, by the way, is an artist's conception. These are interacting cores uh, flinging out material. So these, these hungry black holes are getting fuel to glow like this brightly because of this interaction. Now let's see what the real observations look like. So this is what the scientists really saw. They were able to take some spectra, measure the flickering within the spectra and, and see that these were actually flickering and eating material. Now, strangely enough, these are two different pairs of quasars. They're the same distance apart. We're not sure if that's a selection effect and their survey happens to be kind of tuned to pick up ones of that distance, but they're starting to pick up these double quasars. And this is new and it's telling us about how galaxies are built, how they merge and how these giant black holes might even merge together to get even bigger. Another result, this is the Centaurus A galaxy known for that sort of distinctive S shape you see. I think this is a crazy looking galaxy. Well, it's a big elliptical that ate a spiral galaxy, we think probably about hundred million years ago. Um, when you look at it and add in some other wavelengths, you can add in X-rays and others, you see it also has a big jet shooting out from the center. That interaction caused uh, material to fall down in there. The SOFIA Airborne Observatory was used to measure the polarization of that light. In other words, um, sort of the magnetic field angle of the light that's coming off of it. It's not sort of, it exactly is what it is. And we're able to measure the magnetic fields within this galaxy and see if that merger had any effect upon the global magnetic field there. And indeed it did. You can notice, let me get out the little pointer to guide your eye. Um, you can notice through here, the magnetic fields are kind of coming up and then they go mm -hmm. across and then they go upwards. So there does seem to be a global structure and sort of a bending in the magnetic field that we wouldn't necessarily expect to see. That's because you had two galaxies, one fell into another one and they probably each had their own magnetic field. And now they're interacting, creating a global new magnetic field for this object. So these sorts of observations from Sophia, let us probe this for the first time and really take a look at what it's like.